So why Miami? Ultimately because God called and we said yes to living in and loving on the people of Miami. God had been talking to us about church planting for so many years. It was really more a case of where. And, uh, you know, Miami had been on Terence's heart for many years. He lived there growing up uh, for a couple of years during his childhood. And I knew that wasn't going away for him. But for me, I needed to put my feet on the ground and really hear from God myself. So at the beginning of 2015, we invested uh, some savings and we took our family to Miami to spend some time there. And it was during that time that God really made it clear to me that this is where he was asking us to come to uh, plan and build a church and love on the city of Miami. And I remember the second day that we were there going for a walk on the beach and, and I was saying to God, you know, these are all my hesitations. These are the things that I'm really unsure about when it comes to relocating, particularly our kids to Miami. You know, Australia is a very safe place. Uh, there's no guns in Australia and the racial tension isn't as extreme. And, and God said to me, you know, all those reasons that you have, all those hesitations, that's actually the exact reasons why I need my people here. Those are the exact reasons why I'm asking you to come here to build a life-giving church, to live in and love on the city of Miami, to bring hope and healing to the people of Miami. You know, 89% of people in Miami don't attend a life-giving church or claim to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Miami is a very beautiful city, but like many beautiful cities, there's parts of Miami that are very broken. And this is very evident and was very evident to me as I walked down the streets of Miami. You know, it's one of the highest cities in the US for sex trafficking. Uh, hundreds of children go into foster care each month. And some of the stats that come out of Miami really, really spoke to my heart because my story is one of coming from a life of brokenness to, to meeting Jesus at 22 years old. You know, I was born into a great Christian family, but many things happened during my life and my childhood. My mum passed away, my oldest sister had already passed away, my youngest sister severely brain damaged. And so many things had happened that I didn't understand and it caused me to spiral out of church. So I really only came to a real relationship with Jesus at 22 years old and came from a really broken place. So I really resonated with the broken hearts of Miami and meeting those needs as a church. I also work in television and media in Australia and have done for the past 10 years. And during that time, I've really come to learn that no matter how affluent and blessed your life may look from the outside, no one's life is truly complete until they find their part in his story. And I know there's so many people in Miami with a story just like mine. And that's why Miami for me, no matter what stage of life that people are in, whether they're in a blessed stage or whether they're completely broken, that they would all find their part in his story. The call to Miami specifically for me actually came in October, November 2014. And I went on a 40 day fast to really hear from God and get clarity on the call as to whether Miami was the place he was calling us to live in and love on. And he spoke to me through this verse in Acts 7, 34, which is where God calls Moses. And he pretty much says four things to Moses. The first thing he says is this, that I have seen, indeed seen the oppression of my people in Egypt. Now that's really comforting to know that God sees the exact location of his people in Miami. The second thing he says is that I've seen and that I've heard their groanings. You know, like those groanings you hear that the little baby crying at 3 a.m. in the morning and you pretend like you don't hear. Well, God actually hears. He doesn't miss a thing that he's heard every prayer and heard every cry of his people in Miami. And the third thing he says is that now I'm coming down to rescue them. He has a very comforting thought to know that God would leave his very throne in heaven to come down to earth to rescue his people in Miami. So I love where God says that he has seen, that he has heard, and now he's the one that's coming down to rescue his people. And that's awesome because it proves that it's not just a good idea, but it's actually God's idea. But I love the next part of the verse, the fourth part of what he says is that now he invites us onto the pages of his story and onto his plan. And he says, now you go, Moses, I'm sending you back to Egypt. And it's those five words that really captivated my heart because there was so many different places where we could go and plan a church. But for me personally, there's only one place where he could send me back to, and that was Miami, to a people that I love, a people that I have a heart for, my people. Why do I say my people? Because I understand what it's like to live in Miami as the outsider, as the under-resourced family, as a Jamaican family, 
And you know, there's many people like that in Miami. In fact, 50% of the people that live in Miami were born outside of Miami and born outside of the United States. Now you can only imagine what that does to the sense of unity and the sense of community. So in Miami, it's this very fragmented and diverse people. And I believe that God's calling us to bring unity through the diversity where people divide because of their gender, their race, their age, their culture, ethnicity, their sex and socioeconomic status, that in a place where people divide by their differences, that they would unite because of their differences. And that's why Miami for us, that we can bring unity through diversity, whether you're a banker or a billionaire, or you're broken and burnt out, that all of us have the opportunity to discover our part in his story. And that's why we're going, because God has seen, God has heard, He's coming down and we are privileged that we get to play a part in helping people discover their part in his story.